Hey. This week's video, we got uh, my mini four-wheel drive set. We're going to put together the track here. We're going to race it around the, the course. I just built a new moto, so we're going to take a look at that. First of all, we got to get these parts together here. <clears throat> all right, so this is in the wrong spot. We're going to put this over there. Hit. <clears throat> this goes on this side. This goes on this side. <coughs> and this one goes over here. Oops. There we go. Alright. <coughs> so this is mini four-wheel drive. It's a very popular hobby in Japan, the Philippines, Taiwan, and other places like that. Not very popular here, though. These tracks are really expensive to import into America for some reason. They're not very widely available. I just have the basic set with a additional jump piece. <clears throat> this allows your cars to jump. So, a little bit more about this is, is these racers are fully autonomous. They go around this track all on their own. Now you might think that doesn't seem like it takes much skill and all it would take is just the person with the fastest motor to win. But that is not the case at all actually. Put these in here. Oops. Click. It involves a little bit more skill than that. All right, so we got this assembled. I forgot to grab the tape. Let me go grab that real quick. So with this, a big part of the construction of it is tuning and building your car. After every race, you kind of have to really look at your car to make sure that it's fully good to roll for the next round. as these things tend to take off and bash into stuff kind of quick and can break from time to time so depending on the course you're running on you might need some maintenance <clears throat> here it is couldn't find it for a second there so part of the thing with this is these cars tend to go kind of fast so you might need some tape to kind of reinforce the gaps so that they don't fall apart. So we're just going to kind of reinforce different track pieces together so that they don't fly apart when the cars are racing on it. Put that one on there. It's a little windy outside today. Hopefully that's not coming through on the mics. I think we're underneath the shade enough that the weather shouldn't be too much of an issue. Couple more to go here. Three more. Two more. One more. And there we go. Reinforced. Cool. All right, <clears throat> let's have a seat. Put that down there. First, we have this is uh, the mini four wheel drive lunch box. This one doesn't actually fit into these tracks here. This is actually designed for off road, but it's of the same type of that these other cars are here. This is the one I just built, a new VQS. We'll take that one for a spin in a little bit here. I forgot the other car, so I'm going to go grab them real fast. I grabbed the wrong box. <clears throat> Just go pick this up. Right here. Oh, 
Now we got the right box. So I bought this set off of somebody from eBay. <clears throat> so a lot of these motors I didn't even put together myself. I did take most of them apart to kind of look at them and see kind of how they were built before putting them back together. So this is a mini four-wheel drive. Some of the key characteristics of this is that it's geared in such a way that all four wheels will move. It runs on two AA batteries and a singular motor that has a gearing system that allows all four wheels to go. So I think this one's already batteried up, ready to roll. So it turns on like that. <clears throat> Part of the thing that you do with these is you have to modify them in certain ways. Like this one has fiberglass reinforcement on the front there to help it out. It needs these rollers on the outer edge to glide along the track sides that you have there. This one is the Blast Arrow. This was a model kit. A lot of these things come as a kit where you just buy them and then you put them together. Some of the fun parts though is you can really trick and modify them out like this one. This one has a brand new clear cowling on it. It also has red tires compared to the normal black ones. <clears throat> These small little weights on here add balance. So as the car takes flight, it allows it to kind of dampen the weight. As it goes off these small ramps here, it's going to take air and it's going to actually land back down on the track. So you want it to smoothly land, if possible, to prevent it from going off the course. <clears throat> this one here is a heavily modified uh, kit build. This actually has carbon fiber reinforcement plates on the front and aluminum wheels on the back. That one has aluminum wheels too, but this has aluminum rollers on the front too. So you can kind of really put a lot of effort into modifying one of these compared to like a full-on base kit, like this one with a dog in it. This is like for kids. And it doesn't really have any upgrade parts to it. It just has the basic plastic rollers, standard plastic chassis, and a little dog on the inside. Each of these has their own kind of characteristics and how they go, though. Here's another one. The Flame Astute. Some characteristics I've noticed about this one is that it's really heavy. Can't remember if there's any batteries inside this one. There are batteries in there. Okay. So that's that one. I haven't had good luck with this one. It tends to fly off the track a lot. <clears throat> but we'll see. And this last one here. The Trarong. Trarong. Another one, this one has kind of basic upgrades to it. It was a basic kit, but they replaced the back end here with a different fiberglass part. And then they also added weights to the side of these. So a lot of these chassis have like spots for the weights that you can actually put on there. And if you have weights, you can put them on there, like a half, a whole box of them right there. But you can add those and they change the characteristics depending on the track that you have. We have just a very basic track at the moment. It's only a singular loop, but there are examples of ones that go like up on the wall, some that might have loop-de-loops, and all sorts of other extensive things. So a lot of the thing is when you show up for your race, when they do big competitions on them, is you really have to tune your car to the track that you're racing on. So it's not like I can just build this and it'd be like perfect and win every single race. You really have to think about what elements on the track do I have to worry about? Like, are there a lot of turns? If there's a lot of turns, you'd want to change your motor out to be something faster. 
So a lot of these things have their own small little parts, like this uh, box right here contains a lot of them. Each kit comes with its own motor. These are just the basic motors. These are the standard gray ones that they come with. They tend to be a lot slower compared to the performance grade ones. These are the illegal grade ones. These are not eligible to be used on official races, but they can be used on for fun stuff. Uh, this light dash motor is not actually supposed to be there, but we'll put it back in there in a sec. These are the standard uh, branded ones, and then these are the off-brand Chinese themed ones that are much more powerful. But just because you have these very strong motor types that you can put into one of your little motos here is doesn't make it the best car because you have to kind of build for all the other elements that are inside the track and just going fast isn't going to be good so here is some of the other ones some of these are special branded like they can only be acquired during official competitions like this one this is Japanese Cup 2016 I have several of these that I got from the lot from eBay. All right, let's go ahead and get to the main event here. We're gonna put some cars on the track. So before we do that, let me just ch double check that our cameras are in a good spot. Excuse my nose, it's uh, pretty windy outside, so. <clears throat> mm, should be a good angle right here, I think. Double check my other one here. We'll move this one a little bit better. To get a better view of the track. Not a very good view of the track. Uh, Alright, so I guess that works. That one's getting some, this one's getting some. And I got the one on our chest here, just double check that it's straight. Cool. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test drive the Dog Racer GT. This is just a real simple kit. It's not meant to be anything special. We'll go ahead and turn this on and run it through. So how you do this is each one of these has its own little on-off switch. You're gonna turn it on and then you're gonna place it down on the track and then watch it go. Right, here we go. Three, two, one. Ah. That's, a, that's a dog racer. It's a kind of slow car. It does catch a little bit of air off of the jump, but not too much. We have some better ones that kind of do it better. Let's uh, let's try these two out here. I think we got batteries in both these, yeah. Can't remember if there's one in this one. Yep. So most typically, it's uh, the first to make three laps on this track. The special elements of this track is every car goes through every single lane. You have this little lane change. It's right down over here. This allows the one that's on the inside to then switch to the outside. It gets it a little bit less speed because it has to take a little bit longer, giving the ones that are going under a slight advantage for that lap. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one now. Mm, hopefully this is getting it, I don't know. Usually you do this with other people, but I'm just doing it with myself today. Alright, ready? Three, two, one, go! Focus on not dropping on things. Uh, I think the white one won. 
it did make it all three laps, but it eventually did it biff. But it made it all three laps before that happened. So that was pretty good. This one's a winner. We'll go ahead and move this one on to the next round. But let's take a look at some more cars here. Does this one got batteries in it? It does. I think this one doesn't. So we're gonna race it against this one. This one's got Duracell Quantum batteries in it, but this came with the lot that I had, so I don't even know the level of charge that they are. I think this one I put Kirkland batteries in it. So let's take a look. Uh, make sure, inspect it, make sure it's all good. Looks like everything's good. This brake sponge is a little bit off center, but it should work still. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah. Okay, we got him going. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Ah! No off roading over here. Got a little bit dirty there. This one wins. We got it. Uh oh. This part's kind of coming loose a little bit. We might need to tighten that. We'll put that one here. Next one. Uh, I don't think the dog race is going to be winning anything. We could try it though. This one was the next slowest one. A lot of these things can be modified so you can make them faster. Like if I take a look at the bottom down here on this bottom one, you can see that it has the motor inside there. It's on a little sled that you can actually take out and adjust. So if you wanted to put a different type of motor on there, you could. This is just a simple unbranded blue motor. Put that back in there. But there's a lot more powerful motors and stuff that you can put into it. Get out of here, fly. Yeah. Here we fly. Alright, dog race reverses uh, the trier air wrong. Here we go. Three, two, one. <clears throat> oh, dog race almost a bit. No! Off roading is not allowed here. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. So, yeah, Dog Racer works for the most part, but it might need uh, a little bit of adjustment in order to make it work better. Now, we have the motor that I built. So this was from a kit, the VQS BZ chassis. This thing is pretty aggressive and it took me about an hour and a half, I think, to put it together. A lot of parts to this. I actually recorded a video of that, but uh, I thought it was only going to take like 40 minutes and it ended up taking it way longer. Because uh, I don't know if I'm going to be uploading it, but we'll see. Maybe I will. Alright, so this one's all ready to go. Everything looks good. It's got brand new tires on there. A little bit dirty because I was rolling it earlier. Let's go ahead and kind of take a look at it. Three, two, one, go! Ah! Brake pads might be on there. This has a light dash motor, so it's going to go a lot faster. And most of the other things. Oh, almost fell off there. That's good. I crashed. So some of it might be the air and wind that we got going on here. Oh, all right. Aye. Got it. Dusty. 
Nice. So this one, we're going to race on these. I don't know how we're going to start all three of them. Let me adjust my angles of my camera so we can get, get some better shots here. I'm trying to adjust just a little bit lower so we're seeing if we can get a good view of the crossover part. I don't know what we're going to get here at that. I'll just pan down anymore or not. Nah, I'm going to have to lower the legs. Here. Bear with me on this one. As a one-man show, sometimes it's hard to kind of do everything on your own here. Hit. Hit. Zoom in a little bit. Take it back some. I want to be able to catch that as it goes through. Alright. That one's good there. This one, though, we're going to make some adjustments. This is my phone cam on my monopod. Here. I want to try to get a little bit lower. Okay. Here. Hopefully this will be able to show us kind of the starting line and when it gets some air when it jumps off this jump. Maybe I'll do a slow motion capture on that. <clears throat> Hit. I don't remember what type of motor this one has in it. I think this is a power dash. This one might go faster than mine because it has a better motor in it. But remember, it's not all about speed. You still have to stay on the track. This, uh comes from the same model kit as the one that I have. That's why it looks very similar to the setup. But they did make some modifications on this to get these red wheels instead of the yellow and black ones that I have. They also use less brake pads on there. Where the kit that I assembled told me I needed all these brake pads on there. The white and blue sponges that we have. Hmm. Let's power on and take my first spin. Three, two, one, go! Ah. Ooh, it's nice! Well, I guess light dash is definitely a lot faster than whatever this one was. I have to take it apart to look at it. I don't have the ability to see any, but my was destroying this one. This has Duracell Quantum batteries in it, but the batteries are of unknown charge. They might be kind of low. Each one of these has its own different way that you disassemble it. Like, uh... They all have a similar thing to take the cowling off, which is this little peg here. You turn it sideways and pull it out. That allows you to take the shell off the top. And you look inside there. This has a hyperdash. Hyperdash inside. I think the hyperdash is supposed to be faster than the light dash, but I don't remember. That each of these motors has like their own tiers kind of thing. The tiers of the motor kingdom. So we got various amounts. Take a look at some of them. So some of these are dual studded because some of the motors have uh, gears coming on both sides instead of one drivetrain. It has two. These tend to be slower on average but have a lot more torque. Whereas your singular motors are a lot more standard. Each one of these kind of has their own different characteristics. Like sprint dash motors are faster typically. But they have lower acceleration. They're good for courses that have a lot of straightaways and not ones that turn a lot. Whereas like power dash, this has a lot more torque. A little bit less speed than the sprint dash. This allows you to corner faster, but it doesn't let you go as fast on the straights. And you got like hyper dash, 
these are kind of the lower tiers compared to these other ones and then you have the tournament illegal ones which are the fastest motors that they have not the light dash that's not supposed to be there yeah ultra dash and then you got the plasma dash the plasma dash is basically the best motor that that they make it has the highest amount of torque and speed of all the motors other than these chinesium knockoff motors that are definitely not not legal put that back in there alright so let's get back to racing more cars so we just raced that one against that one now we're gonna race mine against this white one this white one has brand new batteries in it too doesn't have the quantums in it like the other one did. Now this has an inspection sticker, so it was officially raced at one point in time. A lot of times before you start your official competition race, they gotta inspect the moto, make sure it's compliant, make sure it has a proper end motor inside of it. It's built properly so it's not gonna damage the track or anything like that. So let's take a look at these two racing against each other. Alright. Three, two, one, go! Oh no! Ah! He flipped. Ah! Hey! They both fell off. Most of them manage to make several laps before they fall. <laughs> Come on, work with me wires. Cool. So that is mini four-wheel drive. I don't know if I'll do much more video stuff with this, but we'll uh, see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. A little hobby of mine I'm trying to get into. Let's take a look at the lunchbox since we got it out here anyway. So this is the lunchbox. This is not designed to be on the regular tracks. This is actually designed to be on off-road out here. So you would build a trail like course like that. You'd dig in and like make a V-shape course and this would actually follow it. With these elements to like keep it from flipping over and there's spikes on the outer edge that keep it from falling over. It should relatively follow the track very well. But let's just roll it across the yard and see what it looks like and sounds like. It is a monster truck, so we'll see what happens. She'll be able to handle this. Hey, there we go. This has a torque motor in it. Hit. <sighs> Yeah, it goes over the hose. Boom, wrecked. Yeah, I don't want it to go under the glass. Hey! It stopped. Yep, there you go. Yeah. The lunch facts. Goes pretty good on off road. These things are relatively inexpensive. It's kind of surprising. Like each one of these motos can be had for about 20 bucks. Although the one that I built was 30 because it was a full kit with upgrade parts. But even then, a lot of the upgrade parts are fairly priced. For like about a hundred bucks, you can get a pretty good moto that would be able to handle most tournaments. Ow, 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 ow. This switch is stuck again. 
Oh, there we go. Got stuck again. Huh. The big problem is this. The track. These track parts. Just basically what you see here is real expensive. I don't know why they're so expensive. But just the things without the red parts, that's like almost 500 bucks if you buy it new. I bought mine used. This red part right here, this is the jump. This is like 180 bucks. It's just for some reason crazy expensive to buy and acquire these things. It's a lot cheaper if you're over in like Japan and Taiwan and Korea and stuff where this is real popular, but here in America, it's not really a big thing. This has been around since the 80s, for the most part. It uh, has multiple animes based off of it. Let's roll some more cars on the course. Let's try this one against mine. I can't remember if this one was slow or not. I think it was. You know, we might be able to make a modification to this. So some of the fun parts with this is your ability to upgrade. <clears throat> so let's say this one right here. What did we say was inside this one? Let me open it up. Many of these things allow you to work on them pretty much without having tools or without the need to have tools. This one here is just being stubborn. Yeah, I can't get my nail underneath it. There we go. Alright, so this had an unbranded blue motor in it. Ow. Can't get underneath it. We got it out the last time. There it goes. So that's, uh... Upgrade this. Oh, this is a Rev 2. Okay, so it's not an unbranded one. So this one's good for power, but not for speed. <clears throat> Let's bump this up to a Mac Dash. This is. This one should go a lot faster than this one. No, something else we could do? Let's try putting, uh, that, that one wouldn't actually fit in there anyway, by the way. That's a double shaft, I forgot. Since mine has a light dash, let's put a light dash in it. Oops. Put this one in there. Yeah. Light dash. So it's pretty cool how this works, is you put this on the little key here. And you just push two clicks. That. Now it's on the motor mount. You just grab this and you drop it in. Just double check it's going to turn. Get any dirt that's inside of there out of there. Put it in there. And we're good. So this car and my car have the same motor inside of it. They also have brand new batteries in each one. Let's check and see how that changes how this race plays out. Three, two, one, go! Oh, they both crashed at the same turn. But they're a lot more comparable to each other now. As you saw, they were very close, head and head, for almost the whole race, except around this uh, this corner over here. Right after the jump, they have a lot of speed built up, and they're gonna have to burn off a lot of that speed real quick to be able to make these two turns. And this is typically right around here in this spot where it slows down, because they are not always on the track the right way. But they do manage to recover most of the time, except after an extended period of racing, they do fly off the track. Cool. 
But yeah, that's some of the stuff that you can do with these. There's always modifications you can get for them. Always new stuff you can do with it. It's a lot of fun. I just gotta find more people that have these and want to go and have fun and play with them. But other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video this week. Uh, leave comments, subscribe, all that stuff. And see you guys next week for another episode of Binaural Recording Sights and Sound.